guys. Uh, um, to start off here, for those of you who are new, uh, for those of you joining, obviously being filmed here, my name is Jim Love. I am a uh, keynote speaker by night, and uh, I speak to high school and college students, so maybe one day you never know. This doesn't count, by the way, this is my keynote. Um, and I also work in a manpower group during the day as a, uh, as a global solutions instructor. Graduated from Marquette back in 2013. Um, and really excited to be here, and I'll let Alan introduce himself as well. Yeah, I'm Alan Hallis, a uh, music writer here in Milwaukee. Um, I started my own website called Breaking and Entering, breakingandentering.net, uh, in 2014, just after graduating Marquette, but it was a student radio show here at Marquette beforehand. I um, grew that into my own business, and now it's been almost 10 years. I know, it's say it like you mean it. Crazy years. to say, I don't want to say Yeah, it. don't get old. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. All right, Omar? Good. Good. Uh, and this is the Hustling awesome. Sideways podcast. This is where we talk to uh, different entrepreneurs about uh, and people with side hustles, about their passion projects, um, getting started as a business, all the different things that kind of make them tick. Yes. And today. Well, before I say that, I do want to acknowledge that um, we are, this is Marquette. No, anyway, no, uh, no we are um, really, really proudly uh, saying we are we are the Hustling Sideways podcast brought to you by the 707 Hub yes. at Marquette. So give it up. To before we got up here that if this existed while we were in college we would have been here every day especially if they brought food we would have been here maybe yeah. three times a day honestly uh, yes. and it's a wonderful thing so we're so excited you are here but there was a real uh, a real true marriage of us kind of being entrepreneurs looking at the entrepreneurial space on campus and saying we need to be there we need to do something together we weren't sure what that something was and here we are on stage doing it so we've been uh, now and i've been together uh in the podcast and also friends uh for uh for about two and a half years and friends for about 15 years you never call i, I never call yeah, i text back and i snap back and that's all that counts but we started this two and a half years ago because we were like hey we're both entrepreneurs and it's a blast i bet we know some people who are too and two and a half years later we've been talking to them every week and yeah it's been fantastic so this is a weekly show um, this will come out. It's about to be Monday when this comes out. Uh, happy Monday. As happy Monday. Say, TGIM, right? I know, no one really thinks that. No one has ever said world TGIM. World. I, know. And I, I can tell you that with certainty. I know. It's so true. But anyway, we're really happy to be here. Um, I'm going to pull my phone out because I want to introduce the amazing guests that we have with us here tonight. Wait, where's this going to air? Just... Uh, it's going to air on, on, on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, on maybe Marquette TV. Who knows? I will tell. <laughs> we haven't we have inked that deal with We haven't inked that deal. We'll uh, the video version of this will be on YouTube. YouTube as well, awesome. um, and, and we also have a social profile everywhere, which we'll talk about. We later. do, we'll get to that. So, so our wonderful guest, and as we do, we bring guests on, is a very good friend of mine, Omar Sheck. He's the co-owner and president of Carnivore Steakhouse, Third Street Market Hall, Wisconsin Ticket Concierge, and Tuck Tuck Chicago. Many things. Omar, welcome. To the no, we have people here. For that. Uh, that is a clap track. I forgot. Yeah, we don't, we don't need. We don't need to edit it. I just forget when we're live that they, yeah. that changes things. Yeah. Oh my, uh, welcome to the show. Yeah. Good to be here. <laughs> uh, first off, thank you for the delicious food from yes. Third Street Market Hall. From Kapali and Third Street Market Hall, I have to give him a shout out for hooking the food up. That's yeah, right, and they're absolutely. like literally, you can throw a rock at it from here. Don't throw the rock, but it's a metaphor. <laughs> uh, how many of you guys have been to Third Street Market Hall already? I know. Okay. Ooh, Everyone? That's a good number. Good. Good. Keep going, because it's, it's yeah, delicious awesome. food. I uh, love what you've done with it, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. But before we do that, let's kind of get a little bit of your background, kind of um, where you grew up, born and raised, and, and you know, your early days. Oh, yeah. So I grew up in Brown Deer, Wisconsin. Um, had a great family there, right, you know, growing up. Um, turned 18 and just wanted to go chase dreams, moved out to Los Angeles for about seven years, chase dreams there, wanted to be a pro fighter and do you can. Yeah, and do the, the whole MMA thing. Um, accomplished that, um, but then realized like I'm not gonna pay any bills with this, right? And so I wouldn't recommend it for most of your kids to do it at like four tooth bridge, a lot of broken bones. Um, but it does teach you resilience, right? So any form of martial arts that you do train, whether it be MMA, Jiu Jitsu, teaches you like wrestling, I had my son do, teaches you resilience to just constantly get back up because you get humbled every single day. Um, then came back here, went to Cardinal Stritch University and um, graduated from there. Great university, too bad that they had to close down. Um, and then just started entrepreneurship, company yeah. after company. Very cool. I actually did not know the MMA part of that. Yeah. And 
that is fascinating to me in its own right. So that was, yeah, it's like, I was just, don't steal from but me. But it's making people get really mad and have them hit you. Let's I, look at them. I'd rather not. I could show a couple of techniques not. after this. Yeah, yeah. You guys don't want to see it? You can stick around. <laughs> 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 We interviewed a wrestling promoter before, and he yeah. didn't offer that. And now no, the restaurant tour is going to be the one that's like, let me put you on. I'm giddy with excitement. This is here. Just now they're going to make this a Yeah, it's just a big restaurant. Yeah. It'll be great. Yeah. Um, so, you, you, what age? I'm sorry. Did you come back to Milwaukee at then? Um, yeah. So I came back here when I was 20, 25. Okay. Yeah, and then went back to college since I got one year done there out okay. in California, mm -hmm. um, and graduated when I was 28. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I met my wife, yeah. which we eventually made him over there. Yeah. <laughs> there, there we go. go. Yeah, it's got to feel good. Yeah. Um, nice days, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was kind of the first thing? Have you always kind of had an entrepreneurial spirit? As far as like, were you the kid that was, you know, reselling candy to people and saying, "Hey, I can make a buck off this"? A couple or, of parents I mean, here I and there. I ate a lot of the candy, so don't don't eat your product, right? But I, I'd say. I always had kind of a hospitality background, right? I always understood in how to take care of people, how to treat people, right? And that's how I kind of have built my business as one customer at a time. And I think too many people, a lot of young people, look way too far ahead, right? Let's, let's focus on what's in front of us and build that infrastructure so that you can grow. Okay. And what was it like to, I mean, obviously going to Cardinal Stretch, it's it, you from 25 to 28, like, was that a different experience being a little bit older and, and, and attending college, or what, what was that? What was that like for you? Did, it, did you feel motivated to to get it done? And, and, yeah, and I felt create? motivated. Yeah. I was 25 years old. I was like a sophomore. <laughs> um, I was living in the dorms, and uh, but I still didn't have the maturity that a lot of them had at the time, so it worked out. Met my wife there. Actually, she was 18 at the time, um, and had a great marriage. Still works. Still, still working. So, but yeah, I wanted to finish and get out of college. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, were you majoring in any kind of business, or what were you majoring? Yeah, I majored in international business. Um, you guys are going to find out, like, look, Marquette University is a great university, and I love it here. Finance major, real estate, you know, my son's gone into. And you're going to learn a lot of things in college, but you're going to learn a lot about yourself once you go to the real world, right? The real world is what really prepares you for, like, okay, open my first restaurant, raise the money. Um, thought I knew, understood business, was in the restaurant business. Year one, some lady fell off the toilet and sued me for half a million dollars. Like, mm -hmm. You don't learn the real world until you're in the real world to be prepared for people suing you, coming at you, and when you start to see success, the bullets start coming from all different directions. So I'm not scaring you out of entrepreneurship, but you've got to kind of be built a certain way. If you're going to be an entrepreneur, you've got to know that you've got to sacrifice a lot to be an entrepreneur, to be successful. Um, and you got to really love what you do, too. Sure. And so really, what, what, what stuck out in the hospitality industry has obviously been your thing. What, were, were there elements that really stuck out to you as like, this is a place where I fit in, or did you have to learn that as it went on? And maybe that would be a fit for me. Like, like yeah, so my first restaurant I opened up um, was called Sakatumi. And you guys are too young to know what that is, but it was probably the busiest restaurant the city's ever seen. It took us forever to open, but we were at two hour waits on Tuesdays. I mean, it was pretty incredible at how busy it was and, and the amount of people that I met working the doors to nightclubs and bars. And it was very successful. Didn't, the partnership didn't work out. A year later, sold it. Um, but I knew I could do something. I knew I had something there, right? I knew how to take care of people. Um, I opened up Carnivore, and everyone told me at the time, like, you can't open up the most expensive restaurant, being a rookie restaurateur, you can't open up a restaurant compete with a guy named Johnny V at the time, who was the guy, right? He had all the athletes, all the CEOs, had everybody there, um, but he didn't see me coming, you know? And so I remember there was a moment in time where I, I had a lot of doubt for myself. He was one years old. Um, I turned to my wife, we'd opened Carnivore, and I was like, I'm gonna kill it. And it was like, we're overdrafted by $100,000. My banker's like, we're gonna pull the plug. This is a true story, like I literally thought I was screwed. And I remember turning my wife on a Monday night and looking out the window and it was snowing, there was three tables, and I was like, oh, I totally effed us. You know what I mean? I yeah. didn't mean that you never want to take that stress home to your wife. And I remember her turning to me, tears coming down her face, and I was like, oh, why did I say that? You know what I mean? I still get emotional thinking about that. You never want to bring that stress home. Um, but literally two weeks later, Dennis Ghetto, God bless his soul, gave us a three and a half star review, three and a half star review, and said it was one of the best steaks he's ever been to in his life. 
and from that moment on, there was like literally a line out the door. And so we just, what I did is I just took care of customer, one customer at a time, mm -hmm. right? And people, no matter how high, how high power they are, star athlete, CEO, plumber, whatever it is, we try to treat the same, right? Mm -hmm. Every person that comes in there is valuable because that one person, you give them a bad experience, and you treat somebody that's high level so much better, they're gonna go tell 100 people they didn't have a good experience. Yeah. And so it's one, one other time that we built that customer base. People ask, well, how did you get to be friends with all these CEOs and athletes and things like that? I never set out to meet all these people. We just took care of people and it organically happened. Sure. Um, one thing that, that stands out from that to me too is the, the number of connections that you made, uh, but also entering into a partnership. Um, was that the plan from the start was to find a business partner and go in on things, or were you set to kind of start something as your own it was, and it grew? Yeah, I was gonna be on, on my own and I was raising money. I didn't have like access to capital like I do today. So the guy who owned the building and another guy partnered with me to do it. Um, ended up bringing another partner in and bought them both out in a year. Um, and then I have different types of companies um, and different investors and partners in each company. Mm -hmm. A few companies you didn't mention. <laughs> but there's plenty. You don't have to go with them all. There's yeah. plenty. Mm -hmm. um, and the experience, like you said, I think there's something so valuable in saying one customer can kind of break you because they can tell, you know, a hundred people that, hey, I had a bad steak or I had a bad whatever. Um, was there somebody that you looked to to kind of model that after that was like, you know, uh, this restaurant, I like the way that they take care of their people or this, you know, restaurant tour, I like the way that they take care you know, of their honestly, not really. And I, I wouldn't say one customer would break me, but in the beginning, that you have to have that mentality. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we don't let anyone leave the doors unhappy. No matter what, you have to win them over, right? But I mean, but you can't, like, okay, so one of the times when I opened Soccer Tell Me, it was like three weeks in. And there was a guy that came in wearing a Packer jacket. He was very eccentric, and he was sitting by himself. And um, one of the waiters didn't want to take care of him because he was one person. He doesn't think he's going to get a big enough tip. So he moves him to another table. And I heard the guy under his breath whisper, I can't cuss here, can I? No, go for it. <laughs> he, just said, he just said, oh, thanks a lot, asshole. He mm -hmm. said that under his breath to the waiter. Mm -hmm. So I remember going over, apologizing to the guy, buying him appetizer, buying him a drink, talking to him. He actually knew a lot about food. Ended up talking to this guy. He was really eccentric for a long time, half an hour. And then the dining room got really busy and I had to leave. But I shook his hand and I said, very nice to meet you. I'm really sorry that happened. And um, he actually, when he was leaving, wasn't supposed to tell me. And he goes, just so you know, I'm the critic, the food critic, the chef. Oh. That's a true story. <laughs> like that really happened, right? Yeah. So yeah. having that mentality of you never know who's in the room, right? Yeah. Right. You never know who you're going to meet, and just treat everybody on the level. Yeah. All the time. There's a there's a um, like a I don't want to say a meme, but like a picture I see a lot. Like I was raised to treat the janitor the same way I treat the CEO. That's um, how my father lived his life. Yeah, that's it. And and I I, I do think that. Marquette has that um, in kind of in our blood, and I'm speaking on behalf of all of you. I think that that's collectively that we, yes that, that, that we learn, um, and it's it's I mean it, that's that's me you I think into this kind of the success of the event is how you treat people, treat people the way that, that that you would want to be treated or that they want to be treated in that sense too, which yeah, I think is critical. You. And one thing I do want to touch on, we oftentimes get into like the, the the highs of like how fun it is to to you know to do our own business or go speak somewhere. You've had some pretty clear lows. I mean, what, what has that, like, <laughs> you've had lows that you spoke about two minutes ago. That not clear, not clear. That was a really weird way to phrase that. Let's move on. Well, I have lows all the time. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. But when you're an entrepreneur, it's a lonely world sometimes. 100%. I mean, we feel like sometimes you're climbing, you're clawing, and you're fighting, and you're by yourself a lot of the times, yeah. and it's frustrating, and you're lonely, and, you know, only, only entrepreneurs will understand that journey, right? Mm -hmm. And so... Um, no, I mean, I, I, there's days where I'm like, I'm done. I cannot do this anymore. Like, I am done, right? And so then you get a good night's sleep and you get back and you're like, all right, let's man up or one up, let's get back to it. So that's so what a funny story. When he was six years old, I came home and I had a really tough partner, right? Mm -hmm. Really tough partner. And I came home and I just sat down next to him. I'm like, hey, listen, man, I got to talk to you. I go, here's my strategic plan. I want to gr grow this company. I want to do this. These are the moves I want to make. This is the stuff I want to do. I got really deep. And he was really this, six years old, like putting this in his head, right? And then after half an hour, I'm like, man, you're in deep thought. Like, tell me what you're thinking. I gotta hear it. And he just turns to me and goes, my butt hurts. I get it. Yeah. I've seen. For me, my butt hurts. Like, 
<laughs> and I hope that that stems some wild next step for you of like, yeah. can create a restaurant called My Butt Hurts. And <laughs> that, that's coming soon. That's we the next time. Uh, yeah. Spoiler alert, that's the next one. Uh, well, yeah. you, you, good luck with that, guys. <laughs> um, I, I think we kind of skipped ahead a little bit on something, though, because we have a lot of people in here that are building businesses and creating things and planning. Um, how long did you spend developing Sakatsumi, your first restaurant? Yeah and coming up with like the creative plan for it before you actually start putting the wheels in motion? Probably about two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean I traveled, yeah. traveled the country, and like there's food hall here at Third Street Market Hall, we traveled to 70 food halls across America. I mean during the pandemic here, I had borrowed time, I sat with my partner, and I called the top food halls in America, and I said, hey, my name's Omar, I've got a bunch of restaurants, I want to take one of my restaurants to your food halls. And they're like, oh, that's great, you know, so they research, they see carnivore and this and that, and then give me all your trade secrets, all your agreements, all your legal agreement structures. I mean, I wasn't going to take a restaurant there, but it was yeah. the best market research that, like, you can get. I might not be allowed in any other food holes, but the amount of research and time that we spent in talking to some of the smartest operators in this country and going and seeing and the functioning, how they function flow, actually going there and meeting them and getting behind the scenes tours of them in America, I think the product that we put together over here at Third Street Market Hall, now that we continue to travel, this is a top five food hall in America. I really yeah. think Snaps to that. I really yes. And I'm not just saying that because you're here. I, I've heard that from, from, I mean, you could have a, a, I was there one Saturday after a basketball game, and there was 21 year olds, you know, doing their thing and, you know, whatever, as, as, as you all do, and, and you know, fired up. And then there was like 33 year olds with their kids running around six feet away, and it worked. And you just don't yeah. get places like that. And, and um, I think that's really special. You know, but the, the two things that you just said, so first of all, and this is kind of for everyone in the audience too, I mean, that's an amazing path to like go and put yourself out there. Surround yourself with the right people like that. Yeah. And, and then don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Reach out to folks. Can I come yeah. visit you? Can I come try this out? That's how you learn. You know? Yeah, and, and all that I can say is no, too. I mean, yeah. you know, one thing that, that like your friend set right now is the most important thing for you in this life, but as we get older, that friend set, that mentor set, and the partner set is the most important thing because as entrepreneurs, I mean, my life has gotten very political, too. I take on a role as one of the top community leaders here in Milwaukee, so I fight the fight for a lot of things, and there are a lot of people that have a lot of things to say, right? So you've just got to kind of dodge the bullets a lot and have friends close to you to get you through those moments. Yeah. Sure. I've taken I've taken close to 40 death threats over the last three years. Oh, my goodness. You know, yeah. Yeah. Through the pandemic, through writing the op-ed to bring the Republican National Convention here, which is not political, it's $200 million for our city. Right. We're now representing the brewers to keep the brewers here, where we've got to get $600 million from the state. Yeah. So there's a lot of people that don't like that. They're saying you're padding the pockets of your billionaire friend, the owner. But listen, we cannot have a hole in, in the state. We cannot lose the brewers. Right. It'll be treacherous to our community, right? And by the way, like they generate a lot of income. Look at concerts. 49% of people that come in for these concerts in FM Field are not from Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. They would not come here, right? So they're coming here, spending money on infrastructure into our city, and this is what we need. And by the way, if the Brewers leave, which they've never threatened, we're going to get this deal done, who's going to be the tenant? Then you're going to lose money, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's Sorry, empty well, state. No, 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 that's okay. I mean, I think it's critical because you've sort of come into this mode, like, you become a voice for a lot of people, whether they, they, they like it, you know, but that's, that's, did you, did you want that? Did you expect that? No. Is that something that you're... No, I mean, I, you know, so just speaking frankly, like I, I never signed up for it, right? You know, and so but when you become a community leader and you start working with CEOs and you start moving the media and you start doing big deals, you just get thrown into it, right? And so, um, and then, you know, I mean, you feel privileged that you do, but it's, it's tough. I mean, it's tough a lot of the times because there's a lot of people that we had to stand up, you know, for the Live Nation deal to happen with the Bucks, building a 4,000-person concert venue connected to over there on the west of the river. That's a $60 million project without a penny of subsidy from the city or state. We had to do that deal. So there's a lot of other concert venues that were not happy about that. But how can you turn that down for our city when that's going to bring all these visitors here to our city? Yeah, it's a bigger sure. picture, which is you know? important and hard for some people to, to grasp, I can imagine. Yeah. Um, this actually brings up a pretty good point too, because you can be outspoken and have your, you know, speak for so many people, but you're also running a business, so you're running your thing. Has that affected your business relationships at all? What you say, or, or you know what I mean? Has that no? No, I mean, there's always going to be some people that are that are unhappy, right? But you got to do what's right, and so when you become a leader in the community and one of considered one of like eight people that really shape what happens here in the city. Mm -hmm. You've got to stand up for things to move the city forward. And so there's more people in support of that 
versus like, oh, I don't like him because he stood up for this political convention or he thinks that there should be some taxpayer money for the group. It's not that I think that that's the structure how it is. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and it's no, not really asking. Yeah. I mean, there's been yeah. overwhelming support, more so because you, you stand up and you take the time to do yeah. what's right for the city. And it's important to say, too, it's not just your business that gains from it. There's so many businesses. Yeah. It's the city of Milwaukee that gains from things like this. Yeah, I mean, it, it, not, I'm not going to get into everything today, but I mean, you know, there's a lot of other things that we do, like that represent domestic violence in Milwaukee, raise record money for the facility called Sojourner, so that, you know, so there's a lot of those things that you mix in with it that makes it hard for people to say a one-off event that they didn't like or something I stood up for say, he's a bad guy. Mm -hmm. right. You do all the right things and in your heart and what you think is right, yeah. it's hard to say that. You know, sometimes Alan and I talk a little bit about, and, and we're all, a lot of entrepreneurs, and I'm sure a lot of people in this room are, Cut from the same cloth in the sense that you want to keep going and you want to, you know, like your time is sort of spent doing the thing and you want to keep moving forward. Reflection, though, is important in, in taking a step back oftentimes. And, and we all do it in different ways. You know, I'm, I'm a man of faith, so I, I, I tend to pray, meditate, whatever, whatever it might be. Do you have the things that you do to take a step back to sort of acknowledge how far you've come, even maybe it's not where you thought you would be, and, and, and to appreciate that and then move forward? How does that work for you, just in terms of some, some of your personal ways that you find to, to step back and acknowledge what you've done? And, how much, you, how much uh, progress you've made? Um, not really too busy, just trying to move things forward. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> it's a really busy year this year. Next year is going to be really busy. Then I think things slow down just a little bit. Like the deals that I take, most of I have, a, have actually a few consulting companies, and most of what I take on now is only, are only really important to the city or the state to move things forward. Like I've turned down a lot of consulting clients because I'm not going to completely run myself to the ground. Mm -hmm. But if it's a deal that's incredibly important, for our community, I'm gonna get involved in it. Yeah, sure. Um, we also talk a lot about like managing time and making this thing. What does a what does a day look like for you? How do you do that? Yeah, how do you manage your time? How do you manage or prioritize? You know, this has to get done versus this versus this business versus yeah. that business. Well, I mean, that, that's a really tough question. I mean, I, just speaking frankly, like. I have not really had a true work-life balance. Mm -hmm. When you have so many companies and you have hundreds of employees and you're moving the meter with a lot of different things, there, there really is no such thing as work-life balance. I mean, I hate to kind of say that as you're growing mm -hmm. companies as much as we are. I do spend every Sunday with the family. We do vacation, but it's a sacrifice. I mean, every day is a little bit different too and I prioritize really what's in front of me Today, got up really early, had a few conference calls, then I had one hour to prepare for a one hour speech this morning to all the hoteliers, then I had to come back and meet with Tammy Baldwin, the U.S. Senator, mm -hmm. then had another meeting for a consulting client, um, then I had to prepare for another meeting, and now I'm here. And now you're a podcast. Yeah, and then she's, tonight okay. I've got to go greet somebody, a big, big, big CEO over at Carnivore, and then yeah. my daughter's last volleyball game, so I'll be going to that. There you go. So, so I, 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 I every actually, day is different. Yeah, you're busy here. Yeah, every right. day is, is different, <laughs> and, and it's hard to break down. I try to prioritize and as much I, as I can, but a lot of the times, if this company needs this attention, we just, I really hyper focus to get as much done as I either can. Yeah. But I have an incredible team. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm the only one people. that I've ever paid, yeah. and, I, and I really just kind of look over the top line vision and just support them. Yeah. Sure. And that, most people <laughs> I've hired right now are smarter than me. That's, that's what it's all about. <laughs> I mean, honestly, you're yeah, yeah. a 26-year-old kid running our finances and our forecast that I have to tell to slow down sometimes because I don't understand what he's saying, like he's got to slow it down for me. I've got a director of banquets that is the most organized, meticulous woman. I've, if I sold all my companies and tried to do her job, I could do it up to 60%. This woman color coats her, her outfits 30 days ahead of time. Oh my God. I mean, I've never seen anyone I don't know what I'm wearing tomorrow. I, have, I don't even know what I'm putting on today. I had to check before. I, I, have, I clearly it doesn't look you know, like I have an operating eyes. part, like <laughs> I have killers working That's for me. Awesome. And I don't micromanage them. I get out of the way. Yeah, you let sure, them I just support them. Yeah. yeah. I think the one thing you brought up, work-life balance, right? Um, I call it work-life harmony. Because I don't think you can, there's, as long as you have an iPhone and a connection, you are not, there's no you're checking your phone. If you harmonize what you're doing and you find a comfort level with maybe, at night you do a couple things, but you go back to the family, that's where I found myself to be the most, because I'm, I'm not going to be a nine to five person. I won't, I never will be, and probably none of you ever will be. That's gone. I mean, it's irrevocably gone. I think COVID kind of changed that, but you were always wired in. It's up to you to harmonize that time and make sure it works for you, and maybe you work better at, at eight at night. Maybe you do, you know, whatever, whatever that is for yeah. you, but that's, I, it sounds like that's kind of what you found. Yeah, and you find, you find out what works for you and what's yeah. best for you, and, and honestly, there's a lot of reward entrepreneurship and starting your own companies yeah. and I failed a lot of companies we talked about those I failed a lot of companies 
but it's that gut check, right? I mean, if you're going to have your own company and you're going to be an entrepreneur, it's not going to be easy. You're going to find a lot of different challenges, and it's a matter of my life is solving this problem and moving on to the next problem, solving that and moving on to the next problem. You're going to have to really gut check, and I will tell you, as an entrepreneur, and having, if you're going to have a successful company, you've got to believe in yourself more than anyone else. Yeah. Anyone else, because you're going to have your own friends that don't believe in you. You're going to have people that turn on you. You're going to have people that that don't want you to succeed. I hate to say it like that, but that's the reality of how it really is, mm -hmm. right? And you find the people that are with you, and so you make money together with them, right? Or you help each other, help those people. It's really important, your peer set right now, leading up to the rest of your life. Yeah. And, and you surround yourself is critical. Exactly, pick and choose. I think that, you know, you don't have to have people in your life for, for, for no reason, that was a double negative. You, you can, hey, let's move on. Yeah. Moral story is pick, pick, it, pick and choose your folks. If you, you know, have, have, have your tribe you rely on, and, and that's, that's okay. It can be a small group. And people ask, like, oh, why do, you, uh, why do you hang out with the SEAL or why do you hang out with all the athletes? Well, what do you think the athlete, like, I want to hang out with the athletes that are good people, that know how to treat people, look people in the eyes, that, like, hang out and are good to my staff. That's why I want to hang out. I don't care if you're a star athlete. It doesn't matter to me. Um, but I want you to be a good person, and we're gonna we're gonna grow. So I have like you know a lot of these guys invest with me, and a lot of these guys would do a lot of deals together. But why why do I have things in common with them? Because they are so hyper focused on what they're doing. They're the most motivated people. They have this like insanity to succeed, right? And I always call it insanity to succeed because they're so obsessive with being the best out there. And that's kind of like you find common people with that mindset. You'll see where you're gonna go. Yeah. Who's, sure. like, who's like the one athlete who stuck out to you like that? Like somebody you met that's like that's that's the, the guy or the gal who's been just really committed to their craft. I mean, a lot of them. I mean, when you get to the high levels, they're yeah. all like, yeah, I'm sure they're all yeah. so competitive, <laughs> and they're all just want to be the greatest. Like the the thing you don't see, even if the batting average is low or he's not throwing the right passes, is there the, a lot of them? They're the first ones there, the last ones to leave. You're watching tape, constantly studying. Yeah. They're obsessed with what they do. Sure. Um, I, I do want to bring one of your restaurants up previously that's associated with an athlete too, where you had to deal with maybe a pivot as a, as a business as well. Uh, if you're okay with bringing yeah, up and yeah, talking about it. Yeah. Um, so you had Ryan Bronx Graffito. Yeah. Uh, this is, of course, when he's the biggest star for the Brewers, and he runs into his PED issue, yeah. um, which he had, ended up being like acquitted of, and there was a business with it. As a business owner that's now attached to that name and attached to that brand, when something like that happens, what was your plan of action? Is there one yeah, for yeah, the yeah, emergency yeah. kind of like, because now all of a sudden you're associated with somebody that has a negative PR big hit towards it. Yeah, no, that was a huge, huge um, story. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, you talk about a dream. Like I remember Aaron and Ryan calling me, right? And they're like, hey, Aaron Rogers. And so they're like, hey, this is coming off the 20th left. And they're pulling <laughs> Yeah, sure. so two different sports, and they're like, hey, we want to do a restaurant. And I'm like, okay, great. And they're like, we want to do it with you. I'm like, in, right? Of course. <laughs> so we start talking, yeah. and yeah, we work it out. There's a lot of pressure with that restaurant, though, because now you're representing two MVPs, the two biggest stars of two sports. You can't have a bad product. Yeah. You can't have a single person walking out of that restaurant unhappy. So I don't know if I would do that deal all over again, because it's like, yeah, you're going to make money, but the pressure of that deal, yeah. because it's not a perfect business. Right. And so sometimes people having a bad day, maybe the bad service, whatever else it is. We ended up crushing it. USA Today rated us the top athlete-owned restaurant in America. Wow. So I was super, super happy with that. And then the PED uh, yeah, scandal. The hit, scandal yeah. hit. And so I was in the middle of the two. Um, every PR company that I talked to said, disassociate, disassociate, disassociate. Cut them, so you're not friends with them, move on. And then, you know, you guys said, that's what Aaron did. I mean, Aaron disassociated. Mm -hmm. so I'm not a star athlete like those guys, so I'm not going to judge. Um, I couldn't do it. Ryan has been one of my best friends, still is one of my best friends. I could not smear him. Mm -hmm. um, we did cut a partnership because we had to. And, uh, you know, he apologized and we, we, we worked it out. I talked to the media about a month after, but I remember, I mean, TMZ was calling me, USA Today, like, I was, this is what is going on. Um, and so I, I just spoke from the heart. And I know that it's going to be other companies that say the best thing to do is disassociate, but I spoke from the heart. I don't, I don't forget those days that he met a family and one of the kids was maybe, you know, disabled in some way or, or something, and he gave his credit card saying, I'm buying him dinner. Like, I don't forget all those times mm -hmm. he did those types of things. And so, you know, I couldn't disassociate. I just 
cut ties and said, hey, we're going to move on, we're going to do business down in the future, and I just spoke from the heart when I talked to the yeah. guy. I think that's your difference as, as an authentic leader. I mean, frankly, that's and that's why you've been successful. Because I, I do think most people would be like, yeah, of course I'll listen to PR firms and I do that. But you want the route that was closest to your heart. And that's, I think that's how you make every decision. And that's what separates you, I think, from the pack. And, and, uh, and why you know, you're know you looking at, at successful spots all over the place. And people are attracted to that leadership style. And frankly, to the entrepreneurship style that brings in. Because you care. You have passion for it. And you're not going to be like, I'm just going to do what they tell me. Here's how I here's how I operate. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna change that for somebody else, which I think is really cool. Thank you. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, let's talk also about the Third Street Market Hall project a little bit. So for those of you that lived in Milwaukee, Grand Avenue Mall uh, was a long time mall for decades, and then all of a sudden kind of fell on hard times. Mm -hmm. The decision to re revitalize all of that. <clears throat> Initially, there was some criticism is that. Of that as well. Oh, of course. It's like it's not going to work a hundred times no. over, always. And I said, you guys, I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to be wired. And you're going to be entrepreneurs. That's what fuels you. Once people tell you you can't do something, yeah. that's what makes more. Do you ten times? Yeah, more, right? yeah. Go forty. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, that that area on this side wasn't considered ten years ago. It was a little CD, right? It wasn't considered the safest area. I personally was working on a lot of things west of the river. Uh, the, the big project of mine, the, the legacy project I was working on the convention center, we were able to get it set. Two thirds of it was done. I became chairman of Visit Milwaukee for seven years, fired all the management staff, brought a new CEO in there who was phenomenal, Peggy Smith. Mm -hmm. Then over the Wisconsin Center District, I decided to fire all them too because they were, weren't doing anything. You make enemies when you have to make these choices, but you gotta do what's better, best for the community. So we fired them, did a national search committee, brought in a guy named Marty Brooks, ran Madison Square Garden, and now these two organizations are working together and we're championing huge business. But I knew I had to bring those two in to do this deal. We were able to get from the state $21.5 million to what's called moral obligation to bond out for $460 million completion of the convention center. What does that mean? That means we're bringing hundreds of thousands of more visitors per year, millions of dollars of infrastructure, these people from out of town paying for our infrastructure here. It's massive for our community, for our transportation companies, for hospitality, for hotels. The whole works and it brings a lot of people and eyes in on our city. Um, so I knew at that time that was going to be huge on that side of town. I turned them down originally when they wanted me to consult on a food hall there. I didn't like the vision. Um, I didn't. I, I was thinking of what my next move is to be on restaurants. I only own one restaurant now with more different types of companies. And um, and I knew also I was in talks with Milwaukee Tool to move their headquarters down. And I knew what was kind of happening there, so I took the deal on. Um, we, we did a lot to kind of clean up the area, if you will, as well. Sure. And part of me was already working on that part of town, but I also wanted to be part of a dilapidated mall that sat there for 20 years to turn it around when nobody thought that we could. Yeah. And you had some of the smartest billionaires working on it for me. I can't take credit for it. It's Josh Krisnak from Hempel, my partner, who's here once every two weeks. It was really his vision and his infrastructure. I helped raise a lot of the money, bring a lot of the politics to it, brought a lot of the investors to it, but it's really a collaborative effort. Sure. Um, and then tell us a little bit about connecting people, bringing to that project. Like you're, you're somebody that I think has really mastered networking. What is kind of the thing that, that drives you when you network with somebody? What do you look for in a, a potential partner? Like, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't. You know, I mean, so here for young people, it's all about. You know, I, I know we use the term network, right? But I will say, my first year in business. Let me give you a story. Okay, so when I was first uh, when I was first on the scene, the governor called me. Said, hey, um, we want you to come on. We want you to come on my tourism board. And I'm like, oh, governor, you know. And these days, I'm fighting the governor. So I'm back and forth. And, but it was like, wow, I get to go on the governor's board. And so I remember going to his house, and I was the first one there, suited up and everything like that. And I'm like, I have 100 business cards. I'm gonna get 100 business cards. I'm gonna meet all these important people there. I'm the scrub. This and that. This and that. So. I remember this kid came by and he was just like part of the catering company. He's like, hey, uh, you look pretty important. Are you here? I go, I'm the first one here. I'm not important. I'm still in a restaurant. <laughs> He's like, do you want to know the light? I said, no, 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 I'm not drinking, you know, this and that. So an hour later, people start coming, right, and, and hanging out. I remember meeting a lot of people, but throughout the night, he kept coming by me and called me Mr. Important, joking with me. Do you want to know the light? Remember this, this kid named Jacob. And the point of the story is I don't remember anyone else in that room, but I remember that kid. I remember giving that kid my business card afterwards and saying, wow, you really touched me. Like, treated me that way, let me help you. Like, I'm connected all throughout the state. You need a job, you need anything, you need a connection to a company, you let me know, I will hook you up. Because in that short time, he made that much of an impact on me. And we have that ability as people to get through to people at deep levels right away when you know how to treat people. 
point of the story is I don't remember anyone else in that room. I remember that kid, and I'm still talking about that kid, which is crazy, right? Mm -hmm. So I remember my first year in business, I collected all these business cards, and I'm like, oh yeah, I got all these people, this and that. And I started looking at the cards, and I'm like, I don't know where any of these people are. So don't be overly anxious to meet the whole world. Just focus that one at a time. Because relationships are procured over time, right? So you meet one person, do something thoughtful for them, right? Remember what you talked about. Take that card and stay in touch with that person, right? And then you do that one at a time, and before you know it, you start spiraling, right? And then what you have is it's called a network and a lot of people, but, but it's a lot of upkeep and it's a lot of work. I mean, I'm literally on this thing constantly, but I know, I know I have people that will be there for me at all levels, right? Federal levels, law enforcement, local levels, governor, speaker, like, so start small, focus one at a time, and before you know it, you're gonna have like a network that you just can't believe. I love that. That's, I mean, that's like perfect. I, so, as we're starting to wind down just a little bit, and then we'll get into some Q&A here from the and crowd. And then we're hustling sideways. And then we're hustling sideways, <laughs> that's right. Um, if, if, think about Omar at, at age 18. I think about you kind of, you know, starting to become an adult and, and, and some of the thoughts you're having. Give me, give me a piece of advice that you would give yourself at 18, which, what, what, what you know now, something to focus on, or what, what you would just want to speak into existence. Oh, right, you know, I slapped the hell out of myself right now at 18. <laughs> I, wasn't, yeah, I wasn't on straight, but you know, you, 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 take, you do it in your time, right? I mean, kind of a lot of the principles of what I talked about today, there's no secret in terms of how to really gain power if you're looking for power. There's no secrets in, term, in really building your network. It's really just called being good to people. One at a time, right? Doing thoughtful things for people, being there for people. It's that simple. It sounds cliche, but that's how you meet people and continue to grow. Because at the end of the day, I know this sounds crazy. Like, I, you know, I don't think I could make it through this life without my friends. I think it's the most important aspect of life are your friends. I really do. It's not the money. I've never chased the money. I, well, of course, I care about money, but, but that's not how I'm motivated. But it's your friends that really help you get through the ups and downs. And you figure out who your real friends are through the ups and downs as well. I love that. And I think that's such a, it's a powerful message because I think oftentimes we feel like success is something that we don't have in our grasp. You know, when we're, when we're young, it's like I have to learn something or I have to do something different. At the end of the day, you've got to be yourself and, and, and meet people and put yourself out there and treat them in a way that, that's going to make them better. And that will, as you have heard, lead you to success. And, I'm still waiting on my six. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's just, yeah. <laughs> soon, soon. Uh, but I think it's a really critical message. But you know, you simplify but, it in a way that, that, that and, works. And you know, like define success. Everybody has a different mm -hmm. definition of success. I know billionaires that are unhappy, very unhappy. I mean, and you know, there's a going on a third marriage. They don't have a relationship with their kids. Like that's not success. I can tell you another story, which I won't tell because he's still around. He's powerful. But I called him a loser one time at dinner. It just came out wine because he didn't have a relationship with his kids. He didn't talk to me for six months, took his jet back to Florida, he was furious. But you know what? He came back six months later and it's like, you're absolutely right. Yeah. You know, and I didn't mean it, it just came out. We were drinking wine. He was like, yeah, I haven't talked to my son in six months. He's 19. My daughter's in rehab, right? He's on his third marriage. I'm like, you're a real loser. You failed in life. Because that's true. Like, what, what is success? Everybody's definition of success, don't chase the money. Like, go after your dreams, mm -hmm. your passions, right? Somebody, I was listening to a podcast the other day, and they're like, real successes when your kids want to hang out with you when they get older. That's right. Yeah. And is that the case? Is it, yeah. Guys, yeah, my daughter's a fantastic <laughs> can, can you confirm that? Yeah. 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 Excellent. Well, thank you so much yes. for doing this. Um, you, what is kind of the next thing on the project uh, for you, uh, project-wise? What's the next thing you're really focused on? Uh, the Brewers right now. It's all Brewers. I mean, yeah. we're in a good position. Keep them here. Yeah, so we're in a good position. It's going to go to the assembly. Well, I won't go into the whole detail. I'm going to do it. But like, we're going to get that done this year. We're going to keep the Brewers here a long time to 2050. Um, that's what I'm hyper-focused on right now. And, I, you know, I, obviously just a lot of different consulting clients. And we're growing a food hall. Yeah. For those that are yeah. 21, we just put in 20, 24 tap your own beer wall in there. If you guys are all talking, are we all there? Yeah, yeah. We're, yeah. we're on our way out. We're building yeah. a large venue called Over Three, three. <laughs> and that's another thing too. Is like, like I've been taking a penny out of the food. Like, yeah. it is doing well, but everything is getting reinvested into it. So think long term, strategic. Don't think short term. Don't have that first year in business. You make a lot of money and you buy a Tesla. <laughs> yeah, there you reinvest go. your money, right? Don't wait a long time for it by Tesla. <laughs> Um, and lastly, if you want to find you on social media, where's the best place to follow you, find um, you, keep up with you? Yeah, Omar MKE, like Omar Milwaukee, Omar MKE is my website and all my socials on there. And you can click on my email too. If you ever have a question mm -hmm. or you ever want to come by the hall and have a coffee and you need some advice, 
I'm happy to sit down if I can. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it gets really busy, but I'm happy to make time. I will make time to sit down with you if you need some advice. Um, or if you're thinking of a business, I'm happy to sit down with young people. Anybody that's young that lives here, that wants to stay here, I want to help. Are you and I still consider young or, or no? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's just well, we well, you are young. You guys just don't look young. Well, we try. <laughs> um, well, that's wonderful. Omar, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. And now we're actually going to open it up for um, a little Q&A. What would you want to Well, we're going to end the podcast and the Q&A that you can see later. I don't know yes. what's happening, guys. Alan does <laughs> Uh, we are the Hustling Sideways Podcast. Thank you so much for listening uh, or watching. And you can find us everywhere. We are Hustling Sideways on all of your streaming platforms. Uh, we are also on Facebook. We're on X. I'm trying to call it X. Call it Yep. Uh, we're on Instagram. We're on YouTube. We're on TikTok. Hustling Sideways everywhere. If you want to be a guest on the show, if you're watching at home, and you have your own side of business or passion project, I have a frog in my throat. So I'm gonna That's okay. Out. He's getting emotional. Uh, yeah. Okay. It is, you can send us an email. It's hustlingsideways at gmail.com. And Jim, keep on hustling. We'll see you next time.